I was always very interested in the human aspect of biology, um, so human biology and disease. Um, but I really, I, I didn't personally want to go into medicine. I knew I wanted to study a biological science. I was interested in human physiology. So it was just a case of looking for courses that would um, work for me. I really like people and I really like lots of things like art and history and all this, but it all feeds into the human brain. I think biomedical sciences would be a good subject for a student to consider studying. Uh, if they're interested in how the human body works. The first year of the course is a common curriculum. All the students study all the material. In first year you'll be covering everything from statistics course to maths to psychology, neuroscience, cells, biochemistry, genetics. It's, it's so wide. I really like maths, um, so I wasn't sort of horrified to learn that one out of three of your exam papers in first year is a maths paper. In first year you have ten lectures a week, you might have a laboratory session, so two or three hour practical class, and then you'll have a maths or stats class and your tutorials. You really can, having got a foundation in biomedical sciences through the common first year curriculum, then branch out and do exactly what you want, tailor your studies exactly to your, your interests, and I think that's probably what sets us apart. By kind of the end of second term of second year, you choose whether to go down the cell and systems pathway or the neuroscience pathway, and that really shapes what your third year is focused on. Ultimately, they'll end up with one of two degrees. They'll either become a cell and systems biologist, so they might study um, systems neuroscience, or they could study how the heart and the lungs work, or they could actually study molecular medicine along those lines. Um, alternatively, they could get a degree in neuroscience, where they have specialised not just in uh, neuroscience, but they've also added on to that some psychology. It was tough because I, I do really enjoy neuroscience, um, but for me, just the balance overall of what I'd be studying next year, I felt it suited me better. Because um, within Cell and Systems, I'll actually be studying some neuroscience, um, and then I'll also do immunology and microbiology. Neuroscience seems incredibly specific already, but there's actually sort of loads of different avenues you can take within it and the course kind of allowed me to sort of taste them in first year. The cells and Systems stream is the stream that I'm taking that I find really exciting uh, and that is, it encompasses a very wide range of possible topics. So for example you do some pharmacology, um, you do systems physiology, development, pathology, diseases. Because it's quite small, there's only 30 odd of you in a year, it, it's great because you, you get to know everyone from all the different colleges. It's quite intense lab experience, but it's fantastic because you choose an aspect that you find really interesting, you are specialising in that area with a supervisor who's an expert in that field. You get to experience what it's like in a lab before so you can kind of decide if that's really you know, what you want to do. As a second year science student, my average week would have, say, two tutorials, um, maybe five or six lectures, and one, out, one practical class, which is, say, an afternoon long. Um, and apart from that, I'd be reading for my essays, preparing for tutorials. You have to be clear, I think, that this course is not a course that's designed to give you a qualification that enables you to go and do clinical diagnostics. This is a course about giving you a foundation in uh, understanding human physiology, uh, human genetics, human neuroscience. This is an exceptionally well-resourced university with, with fantastic facilities. Every college has a library. It means that I don't have to sort of you know, cycle off somewhere, walk somewhere. I can just kind of fall out of bed, walk across the quad. I'm in the library, it's open 24 hours a day. So we've got one of the three copyright libraries in the UK here, and on top of that, there are subject libraries around, around the university. The teaching labs here are amazing. Um, I mean, they were a big step up from school. You kind of walk into your first practical here and you're going, this is serious, okay, real white coats. And of course we've got the whole college side of the university with everything that comes there. So more libraries, the tutorial uh, provision, the, the opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one, uh, 
uh, chats with, with experts in the field about, about the subjects that you're studying. And the tutorials will be uh, one hour each and you'll have to do sort of work in the preceding days for that. So normally it would be an essay, um, but sometimes it could be sort of a problem sheet or um, they might want you to do extra reading or they might want you to do an essay at all. They might say, I want you to think about all of these things and come with loads of questions. You're suddenly put in a room with a world-class academic who knows, well, it's a P it seems, everything that is to know about this subject and they're asking you questions right in the deep end. Most of my tutorials were just with um, the other girl in college, Cathy, who does biomed. Um, but actually really good fun because it's quite informal um, just getting to chat and kind of bounce ideas off um, you know, with, with the professors. It's good to have that discussion rather than sitting passively and listening to someone you, you're expected to contribute. When you're in school, science textbooks say this is how it is and then in university you realise that may not necessarily be how it is, it's just the best working hypothesis. You just get a bit sharper, mainly from tutorials, you've got to think on your feet. I decided to apply for the unique summer school here at Oxford um, because the course did look fairly interesting and it's a taster session for a week and you get to live in a college for a week. So I went for that and I spent a week here doing biomedical sciences and having a taster session of pretty much everything that first year would entail and then I decided after that that I really did want to apply to this course. We're looking for students that are motivated for to study here and really passionate about the subject. I had had this expectation about what it would be like and it was very different so I guess if I was you know advising someone on how to be best prepared for the interview here I would say don't have too many expectations about what it would be like. I was very nervous um, but I really enjoyed it because you're just, again, you're just discussing things and they're, they're probing you with questions. And it is tough because they, they want to see how you respond under pressure and throwing new ideas and new kind of new ways to look at things. They do want to sort of tease out your thought process. So I think I said something quite weird. And he's kind of like, why would you say that? And then you discuss your answer. Looking back, there were some things I said that were probably outright wrong. But I think the way I got there and the way I kind of, you know, um, developed my ideas was what interested them and they thought okay this makes sense. They need when they come to write their personal statement to convey in their personal statement the things that they've done, the achievements, the interests that they've got. I remember when I got the letter um, I didn't actually see it at first, my dad left it in my room so I wandered into my room and it said Magdalen College Oxford and I was just kind of like oh okay so my mum didn't know it had come, so I like re I opened it in my room really kind of secretly and then I must have read it like seven times to make sure that it actually said that I was accepted. Students have got to make sure they're getting it right. They've got to make sure they're applying for the right reasons, um, that the course is actually are going to provide them with what they think it's going to provide them so that it is actually uh, really the course for them. I'm currently thinking probably uh, looking to do neuroscience research. I could see myself maybe after, yeah, after the degree's finished having a year where I worked in various labs getting more experience and did a few, you know, earned a bit of money and I'd love to do a bit more traveling and then after that Hopefully, if, if I'd done a lot more experience in other labs, I'd know if it was for me or not. This summer, I'm going to be doing work experience in Australia. I'm going to be working in a lab in Australia to really help me see if I want to continue with studying. I want to make sure that I can continue to do a PhD. I've shifted to realising how important computer programming is in sort of neuroscience which I didn't even think was a thing before I came here and now I might be interested in sort of pursuing it. Some will go as and work in the uh, biotechnology sector or the pharmaceutical industry and I think it's likely that this course would also produce provide a very strong foundation for going on and studying medicine as a graduate.
people think, oh, I can't possibly apply to Oxford or, or whatever. And I think that's a really, you know, that's a really bizarre mentality to have. If the course looks interesting and you like the idea of living in Oxford, you think it's a, you know, it looks like a nice place to live and you basically think that the style of teaching will suit you, just go for it and, you know, yeah, commit to it. And uh, if you get in, you'll have a great time.